And I want to say so many times we fail to read this Bible. Do you know this Bible is our road map to heaven? This Bible, I call it my chart and my compass. I could not make it without this Bible. Because, my friend, without this Bible, you can go the wrong direction or you can veer off a little bit like a pilot flying a plane. He could miss his course with just a few degrees, and the further he went, the further he would get away from it. And we failed to read this Bible. And I had a little experience I want to tell you about this morning, and perhaps you may have already heard it, but I want to tell it again just the same. But some years ago when I was living in the state of Illinois and I was the district moderator over there, my father had an airplane, and he called me up one day and he said, Son, you can use my airplane if it'll help you in your church work. And I said, Oh, boy, I clicked my heels almost together. I said, That's nice. I'd love to fly. I'd learned to fly and had my license when I lived in Oklahoma. Now I'm in Illinois, and I did need to go out. I could go visit a church two, three hundred miles away and preach in the afternoon and be back to my local church that night. It just really saved me a lot of traveling time, so I really enjoyed it and used it in the work of the Lord. I had a hangar out on the, the main airport there, not too far from where we lived, and I'll tell you, it was really nice. I could just go out and get in the plane and take off and fly and meet my party and do my business and be back home, and it cut down my traveling time in less than half. So I really enjoyed using that plane. It was a little Piper Tri-Pacer Zero Four Delta. I'll never forget it. So one day, I was going to Peoria, Illinois, from Moline, Illinois, to preach a revival meeting, and I could fly at day, I could fly at night, I couldn't fly in bad weather, I didn't have an instrument rating, but I could, I flew down to Peoria and uh, preached the revival service that night. I went in and called the airport and checked with the weather station. I said, how's the weather? They said, we're socked in and you can't fly because a visual flight pilot has to have at least a 1,000 feet clearance before they'll let him leave. So I caught, the, I caught a bus that night and went back to, to Rock Island. And the next night I got one of the brothers in the church and I said, drive with me. And if the weather's good, you have to drive home alone. I'm going to bring the plane and get it back in the hangar. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and down to Friday night, every time I'd call the weather station, they said the ceiling's too low and you're socked in and you can't go, you can't fly. So I had my chart and my compass. Every pilot has a chart and a compass, and I took my chart. And on that chart, if you've never flown, there's circles, there's they call them omni stations. They send out a beam. And when you, re you set your radio to follow that beam and keep that needle right on the center and it'll take you to that beam and then you set it to the next beam and that's the way they find their way when they can't, don't have a good relationship with the ground. So I had my numbers all written down and all ready to go. And, and every night I'd call, can I go tonight? No, you can't go. But I carried those numbers in my pocket so... I wouldn't have to look them up if they said I could go. And this Friday night after I preached, I went to my room, got my briefcase, got all ready to go, but I failed to put my chart in my briefcase. I called the weather station. They said it'll hold for one hour, a thousand feet. I said, that's all I need, one hour to get home. I told my friend, rush me to the airport. I gave the plane the safety check. Didn't worry about my chart. I thought I had it in my briefcase. It was laying at home on my bed. I had the radio numbers, and when I looked for my chart and I couldn't find it, I said, oh, well, I can get home with just these radio numbers, and I can tune in on the radio and follow that needle. And so I called the tower for clearance, and they gave me clearance to take off, and I took off into the night. And they said we had one hour to hold at 1,000 feet, but I hadn't anymore and gotten just out of town good, and I began to bump into fog. And you know, friends, when you're in an airplane and you hit fog, you don't slow down. If you slow down, you go down. You just have to keep going, whether you can see or not. And so here I experienced my first night of trouble in the plane. I was bumping into fog, and all of a sudden, I was so fogged in, I could not even see my propeller. And I was flying at a high rate of speed and 
I couldn't slow down. And I remembered my old instructor said, if you ever fly into bad weather, if you'll make a 180 degree turn, you can fly back out of that weather. So instead of following the needle, I began to make a 180 degree turn. I thought I could fly out of that weather and get on back to where I came from. And I hadn't any more than turn. And I opened up a beautiful, looked like I flew through a hole. And the sky was so light and so bright and so clear. And I looked down and there was a beautiful sparkling city right to my left. I'm flying without my chart now, friends, I'm telling you. And then I began to trust my own feelings and I said, Oh, that's home. That's Moline. I must have been flying longer than I thought I'd been flying. And here, I'm home. So I picked up my radio and called in, Moline Tower, Moline Tower. This is Tri-Pacer Zero Four Delta, and I request a landing. They began to speak back and told me, Zero Four Delta, you're cleared to land, and gave me the runway to land on. So I began to make the pattern and started in for that runway. And when I was coming down to touchdown, the runway painted on the, the number on the runway did not match with the number that they gave me to land on. And it was only two or three degrees off, and there's no two, air, two, no two landing strips that are that close to the same degree. I was still trusting myself, and I said, Oh, I must have just made a mistake. They told me to land on one runway, and I'm landing on the other, but it's just a few degrees off. I must have misunderstood. So when I touched down, I said, oh, thank God, I'm home. And when I taxied out, I couldn't recognize anything. I couldn't see my hangar. The water, the, the tower, the, the beacon, the rotating beacon was in the wrong place. The taxi strips were going the wrong way. I couldn't understand where I was. And so I taxied up to the main terminal building and I saw the big neon lights that said, Welcome to Galesburg, Illinois. Do you know what I did? I was flying without my chart and I landed in Galesburg and thought I was in Moline. Oh, I said, oh, I'm just 15 minutes away. I can make it just 15 minutes. And Moline didn't have a control tower. I was talking to the Moline. I mean, Galesburg didn't have one. I was talking to the Moline tower. And so I couldn't get clearance to take off. So I taxied off, turned a circle, saw that there was no other planes coming in. And I took off into the night. Just 15 more minutes and I'll be home. And I hadn't anymore and got out of the flight pattern and got my altitude and was going and I hit solid fog again. I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll make that 180 degree turn and fly out of it. And when I made the 180 degree, I didn't fly out of it. And then I turned to the left. And then I turned to the right. And then I went up. And then I went down. And I thought, oh, my God, here I am. And then I, oh, folks, I nearly fainted. I remembered that there was two high radio towers between Galesburg and Moline. And I could see them from my home, those high towers with those guy wires out. And I realized that I'm flying around those towers and I don't know where they are. I would have given anything for my chart at that time I could have opened up my chart, turned the dome light on, and located the towers. But I was without my chart. And then I thought, oh, if I see a red light, I'm dead. There will be no time to move. I couldn't see even my propeller flying around those high towers, knowing those guy wires were out there, lost in the fog, not knowing where I was going. I cried to God, oh, God, don't let me die. Don't let me die. Finally, I remembered what the instructor said. He said, if you ever get in trouble, pick up your radio and call out Mayday, 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 I'm in trouble. And I picked it up, and the Moline Tower picked me up, and he said, where are you? I said, I don't know. Do you know, my friends, there's a lot of people this morning, they don't know where they're going. They're headed for hell, and they don't even know where they are. 
thank God for that man in the control tower. His calm voice with God saved my life. He said, where are you, zero four delta? I said, I don't know. He said, get your chart. I said, I don't have a chart. I left in such a hurry. It's home. He said, then dial to this number, and I did, and I gave him a reading, and he said, dial to this other number. He was trying to locate me, and he drew two lines out on his chart in the office. He found out where I was. He said, stay at a certain altitude and just follow directions. I said, yes, sir, I will. He told me to fly a few degrees this way, and then he told me to make another turn. He was guiding me around those towers and getting me out of that. Now he said, fly straight ahead, and when you see the Mississippi River, call me. And I couldn't see up, but I could see down. And I kept flying. I said, I don't see the Mississippi. He said, you're on your road. I said, you're on the route. He said, call me when you see it. And finally, I saw the Mississippi River, and I called him in. I said, now I'm over the Mississippi. He said, make a 90-degree turn and follow the river. And he said, watch the bridges when you come in, and be sure you clear them. And by the time I got to Moline, he had the light, bright flashing lights on that directs pilots to the airport which way to land. And he brought me right in. And when I hit the ground, I got out and said, Oh, thank God, thank God. But listen, friends, I thought about the people I preached to. And maybe some of you here this morning, you're flying and you don't know which way you're going. And you're going without the chart. This is the chart. This is the compass. Jesus said you must be born again. Jesus said except you repent you shall all likewise perish. If we don't follow the chart and the compass we'll miss heaven. Just this closing thought. When I began to think of that several days later I thought oh how how humorous how ignorant for me to think I was landing at Moline. I was talking to Moline. And until I got to the, the main building, I thought I was in Moline. And for me to tell other pilots, I thought I was landing at Moline, but I was really landing at Galesburg. That's humorous. Oh, we've had some big laughs over that with my friends that flew planes. But this morning, <laughs> this morning, wouldn't it be awful to be on our deathbed and breathing our last breath and tell our friends, yes, we're going to heaven. But we haven't gone the direction of the book and wake up in hell. Wouldn't that be awful to think we were going to heaven and land in hell? And I'm not a judge. I can't see people's hearts. But my, the way people live, and I see them gone out in an automobile accident or a shooting incident or even innocent people. There's the big famous basketball uh, player's father pulled into that rest area to get just a nap. I've done it hundreds of times out on the road. He didn't think anything was going to happen to him. He just pulled in good, strong body, health, and he met God sleeping in his car. And the way people live, and as fast as they're thrust out into eternity, and they think they're going to heaven, but they land in hell. Now, folks, I want you to think about this message. I want you to say to yourself and to God, not to me, I'm not God. I'm not a judge. I don't know how you live. It's none of my business. My business is to preach the truth. And I will tell you, I never get behind this pulpit what I don't do my very best to preach the truth to the people that are in the pew. But this is between you and God. Lord, if I died today, would I land in heaven? Or would I land in hell? I want you to stand with me and bow your head. I want to just pray to God. Lord, we pray this morning that you'll speak to people. 
and help this congregation that we may search our hearts. Help us to face eternity and be sober about it. And Lord, if there's one person here this morning that is not saved or don't understand what we're talking about, that's never given their heart to the Lord or confessed their sins or repented of their sins and made a turn around and forsaken their sins and start living a new life, Blessed Holy Spirit, you are able to speak to them and show them their need. And if you will do that, Lord, we'll feel like great progress has been made. And then, Heavenly Father, you are able to help them yield to you, not to the preacher, not to this church, but to you. We think of people that sat in these pews in times past. One man went out and committed suicide. Attended church, heard the gospel, went home. Months and days and maybe a year went by, but he's lost today. Don't let anyone here this morning miss the call of God. I'm, I'm through preaching, and we're going to dismiss. But before we do...